This is Steve Adamco, the owner and founder of Spectrum Interiors based in Portage slash Kalamazoo, Michigan. What I wanted to talk about today was how to get the most out of a home and garden show or home and garden expo. So what you want to do first off is to get on the website and see who's going to be exhibiting there. See what it is that you're looking for, whether it's a builder, a landscaper, a plumber, electrician, or whatever the case happens to be. So most of the websites, and particularly if it's a show span, they'll have an interactive floor plan. So you can hover over different uh, booths and find out who's there or find out you know, the builders and what booth number they have. You can hover over that and a lot of times, you know, a website link will pop up and you can check out their website. So that's one of the first things that I recommend people do is to check out the website and see what the company is all about. How do they represent themselves? What do they say about themselves? So once you've done that, you can prioritize that list and say, okay, when we get there, this is the first booth or exhibitor we want to go see and the second, third, and so on. So you could group them by builders. You can group them by landscapers. You could group them by painters, whatever that happens to be. So as you're going through this website check, note what strikes you, what doesn't strike you, what impresses you, what doesn't impress you. You know, make a list of things that, you know, stand out and things that maybe don't stand out. Then When you get there to the expo or the home show and you start to visit these people, you know, have a list of questions that you want to ask them that are important to you. How do you approach it? How do you approach building a home? What kind of communication do you have? What kind of people do you use? Where do you put your emphasis? What makes you stand apart from your competition? That would be a good question to ask. What makes you stand apart from your competition? One of the best questions that you can ask is, why should I do business with you versus anybody else in your category or class? You'll get some interesting answers there. Now, the answer that you get is going to depend on who it is that you're talking to. Now, the owner could be there or maybe he's not there and that maybe has somebody else fitting in and manning the booth, so to speak. So it could be a secretary, it could be a marketing person, it could be a salesperson, it could be, you know, a a carpenter, it could be, you know, president, vice president, it could be anybody. So you want to find out what their position is in the field or in the business. So you want to ask the questions that are important to you because you listen to the radio station WIIFM, which stands for what's in it for me. So you want to find that out and you want to find out if it could be a good fit. Now, a lot of times at these expos, it can get a little hectic and you may not get the kind of attention that you want because they're trying to, in a sense, meet and greet as many people as they can. One of the things that I've observed is how they act towards you or whether or not they acknowledge you when you approach the booth. Do they extend themselves to you or do they just let you walk by and look at you and smile? What do they do? So I found that sometimes the people who are at the booth don't really present themselves the way they should. In other words, they're there to get clients and most of those booths, they cost anywhere from 800 to 1,000 to 1,200. And if they have a double booth or a corner booth, it's a lot more than that. So If they're putting that much money into it, you know, what kind of quality of people are they putting into that booth? So you've got to be very careful about all of this and how you approach them basically and how they approach you or how they approach you and how they represent themselves. It's very important to take a little bit of that into consideration because you want to see, does this person or do these people match up in their actions to what they're saying on their website? That'll tell you a lot because sometimes you'll look at it and say, oh, these guys must be super. And then you get to talk to them and they just, they don't impress you much. And uh, a lot of other things could happen there. Definitions of, there's a lot of way you could define your visit there. Let's put it that way. 
So, and one of the other things is to check out their booth. What are they exhibiting? How are they exhibiting it? How are they promoting themselves, their product, the end result? And realize that when it comes to a home and garden show, you know, these are indicative a lot of times of the people that they're working for. And also some of the end results may be a product of someone else's effort. So some builders are just builders. Others are in the design build category. And it depends on how astute they are in the design area. I've seen a lot of things that look pretty good. And then there's a lot of other things that don't look so good as far as design with the home. And the home is your biggest investment. So I would say, like Clint Eastwood said, a man or woman's got to know their limitations. So some of them are good builders, but they don't make good designers. And some think they're pretty good designers, but they're really not. They actually are deceiving themselves to a degree. So. It's important. There's a lot of people that shape a home. You've got the architecture, how the floor plan lays out for you. A lot of times, especially in the interior design field, there's a lot of average and mediocre people in there. It's a very easily infiltrated field. I mean, even if you have a builder's license and I have a builder's license, that doesn't mean, and I'm not speaking about myself here. I'm not speaking, I'm not saying, well, just because someone has a license doesn't mean they're good. Now, there are some that have a reputation for being good, and they have Cracker Jack trim carpenters and framers and all that, and very excellent people. So you want to find this out and take some time and do some due diligence. And you also might want to visit their office after the show to get a little bit more personal about what it is that you want to do and so that you can find the best match for you. But I always tell people to remember one thing. You're building a house so that you can have an interior. You don't have any kind of interior without an exterior. You don't have an interior without architecture. So many times I've seen these wonderful design houses or almost wonderful design houses or wonderful in a certain area, but not wonderful in others. And then the interior design is just, it doesn't match at all. It's kind of like if the house was a Rolls Royce, And then you open the door to see inside, and it looked like the inside of a Honda. Very disjointed. I don't know why anybody would do anything like that, because it's pretty stupid. So you wouldn't do that anywhere else. I mean, a car is designed holistically. A restaurant, if you go to a high-end restaurant, you're hoping, and you better be, that the bathrooms are similar to the look and feel of the restaurant itself. Not that you go to the restroom, and then you feel like you just stepped into a Shell gas station. That's not a good scenario. That appears as if the people didn't know what they were doing, didn't think things through, didn't follow through. So when it comes to this building and furnishing and selecting materials for an interior as well as the exterior, you want to do it like golf. You've got to follow through really well. If you do everything up to the point of following through, you're going to be hooking, slicing, You're going to be a lost ball in tall weeds, and you're not going to like the end result, I promise you, okay? So these are some of the tips, maybe, or the things that you should keep in mind when you go to any home and garden show or expo. Do your own due diligence. Check these people out thoroughly. Ask them why they do what they do, how they do what they do, what separates them, what makes them stand out, and see if it correlates with what they've promoted on their website. A lot of people promote things on their website like we're amazing, we're awesome, we're fantastic. But then you look at their work and anybody that really is good at that says, "Eh, not making it, not cutting it. You know, if you're looking for gold, silver, or bronze, they don't even have the podium on those three positions. They're an also ran. So don't get into that situation. And another thing I would say is that if you have a floor plan and the floor plan is the major driver in any home, it really sets the tone. It sets the tone for everything that's going to happen there. In other words, if a wall is moved, you know, maybe a foot or two this way, it actually could improve the balance of the room or could improve this or the traffic flow or what have you. And a lot of people, even builders and designers and some architects, they don't really get it on the inside. They don't see how everything fits together with the furniture. Okay. Everybody that I know that lives in a home has some furniture. And If you're really going to be classy about it and make sure that your home is wonderful, you've got to really pay attention to this. Don't listen to amateurs, the people who just got into the business and all of a sudden you you think they're the next new hot thing, next new hot person or whatever. They're not. 
Okay, they may be passionate, but it takes a lot of knowledge, skill, and wisdom to be good at anything. I mean, they always say that it takes about 10,000 hours to be an expert at something. Well, a lot of these people are, they're so new, they, they, they've they maybe got, you know, 400 hours in it, not 10,000 hours. I mean, who would you rather fly with, a veteran or a newbie? I'd like to have a veteran because he's going to be more versed in things that can go wrong, possibly. The other thing is a floor plan review. It's best to have somebody who is very knowledgeable as an interior designer and in tune architecturally. You know, an architectural kind of interior designer who's very good at space planning and all that to run that by them. In other words, a plan review so that we can catch some things that aren't right or could be improved before you start investing all the money in there. That's something that I do is a plan review to see if everything's matching with the requirements. And I don't say matching like matchy-matchy. I'm talking about matching with the requirements of the project. I'll give you an example. One of the largest jobs I've received, it was about a three-year long residential project that was quite involved. But when I saw the plans and I saw the details, the architect didn't even realize what kind of furniture the client had and designed this kind of um, modern Gothic kind of home in terms of details, in terms of the um, trim. So I think I think the trim looked like it was more like from a modern Gothic kind of situation. Well, she had a exotic table with inlaid mother of pearl and other furniture. And I said, this is not even going to work. So I ended up redesigning everything, the fireplaces, the aesthetics, the moldings, everything. And here's another one. This is really big. The dining room was two stories tall. They didn't do what we call a reflected ceiling plan. In other words, where are the lights going to be? And I don't mean just the location of the cans. I'm talking about what kind of light bulbs are going to go in each can. Beam spread, intensity, wattage, all of that so that the end result is spectacular. So a lot of these houses don't even go into that. So all this goes into, all this design goes into, and then what do we do? We just do it by whatever the code is for the electrical. No, you should go beyond that. I mean, switches should be where switches need to be, obviously. And outlets need to be behind bed nightstands, if at all possible, so that you don't have this extension cord technology or cords hanging out there. That's the ugliest thing. It's it's terrible. When I see that, I, I hate to see that kind of stuff because it shows that there was lack of planning if that house was designed for that original occupant. So remember, things have to fit. An exotic shoe or an expensive pair of high heels have to fit your feet. I mean, it's nice to look good and hot in them, but you know, you also want to be comfortable if at all possible. So just remember, it's got to fit, just like clothes have to fit. So a lot of people don't take this into consideration and they do really stupid things and take basic balusters and put them on a handrail and then it looks out of sync with the design of the house. And a lot of builders are not the best builders. I'll say it from this standpoint. Some of them aren't technically good builders and some are builders and they think they're designers and nothing could be more disastrous than somebody who thinks they know it and they don't know it. So don't get yourself into that kind of situation either, thinking that your builder is all the the design diva or whatever you want to call them. Like, oh, they're such a good builder and they're such good designers. Eh, Usually that combination usually doesn't uh, come in one package usually. Okay, that's kind of rare. All right. So those are some tips and tricks. I should, I hate that thing, tips and tricks. So those are some, I don't even want to call them tips. Words of wisdom. Let's call them words of wisdom. That's some words of wisdom there you want to pay attention to when you go into this. So, all right, this is Steve Adamco, the owner and founder of Spectrum Interiors, where we not only deliver a look, but also the ambiance as well. If you have any questions, you can call my toll-free number, 866 866- Two three nine six five two zero. All right. Have a great day.